name is Michael Fresh. You are now in conference with Mr. Tex Perkins, and he's the founder of Operator Assistance. Just go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Tex. How you doing, mate? Oh, I'm very well. Great pleasure to say hello, and uh, as always, very, very pleased you're coming back to see us in Adelaide. Oh, yeah, me too. The, the Gov's always been a, a, a great gig for you, and uh, I'm sure it'll, be, uh, sure it'll be standing room only for this one again. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Now, looking forward to getting back to the Gov. And the new CD, mate, is getting uh, e- exceptionally good reviews, and... Uh, I can't wait to hear some of the tunes. I, I hope uh, What Do You Want is in the live set, mate. I, I'm really looking forward to hearing that one. Oh, yeah, you were... We play most of the album uh, live uh, in the set, plus a uh, yeah, handful of the decent old ones. But, uh, yeah, pre- pretty much promoting the, the new record. And, uh, and even... even um, might even have a few new tunes by the time we get out there. We're... We're on a bit of a roll. Fantastic. And, and as always, you're bringing a pretty hot band to Adelaide. Um, Charlie Owen, of course, has been uh, has been with you for a long time, but you've got a, a great new rhythm section. That's right, Gus Agars and uh, Steve Hadley. Um, well, actually, we've got two bass players. Um, Steve and, and Joel Silvershire swap. Actually, there's a fair bit of instrument swapping there. That's a, that's a bit of a long-held tradition with the Dark Horses. Uh, uh, pretty much only Gus gets to, uh, <laughs> to stay on the one instrument. To do his thing. Off. Fantastic. And, and we, we know and love Gus from the Vanders, of course, who uh, featured Chris Altman, a uh, local lad who we, uh, who we love very much indeed. Well, yes, uh, Gus is a local legend, isn't he? He is indeed. Great to have him. Uh, great to see him playing with you indeed. And, and Steve Hadley, I believe, was the musical director for um, The Man in Black, is that right? That's right. Yeah, that's when I first started working with him a couple of years ago. But I've, I've known Steve for, for many years. I, I, uh, well, he's played with all sorts of people, but most notably Paul Kelly uh, for a long time. There's been a lot of a lot of shows around, I guess, in recent years that that are a concert with a narrative similar in the way to the Man in Black. But I've never seen anything that just grabbed me, and I I just love the show so much. And I'm sure that was the feedback you got from everybody. Yeah, it, it works. The show works. I mean, um, there has been. I think there's been quite a few since since we started. We, we're kind of the um, when we started, the, uh, the only kind of reference point uh, was um, looking through a glass onion that was mm. the, the John Waters thing on, on John Lennon. And that was the sort of the, uh, the vague blueprint that we had. But yeah, now, now, now that our show was a success, I think there's just, a, an, <laughs> just uh, an avalanche of, um, of those sort of shows. You know, they're basically uh, all the producers are looking around for who else is dead. <laughs> now the interesting thing that I find Tex is is when I was a kid early 70s Johnny Cash was seriously uncool uh, but now it's it's totally turned around and and it's really the songs were just so good Yeah well yeah exactly yeah, yeah and he had a lot of great songs so uh, that, that that's that's what uh, that's what helps the show as well um when it, I mean when we So, so did you have any interest from the Yanks with with the show? I, I can sort of see it having legs in the US. Yeah, people have said that, but um, I don't know. Um, yeah, um, I can I don't know. It, it's it's a very Aussie kind of centric show, really. You know, the, the, I mean, we love Johnny and we're very respectful, but there is a sort of irreverence to the show as well. We're kind of uh, we're a bit. Uh, we have a bit of fun with it, and I, I don't know the. And 
<laughs> yeah, good point indeed. Uh, and that's the other thing with the, with the dark horses and with you in general. I, I I don't understand why, especially down down south in America, how they haven't embraced you and, and made you their own and and taken you down there and never let you leave. Fantastic, good stuff. Because they, they they seem to, Aussies in general they and and anyone that's got a a, a bit of cred that's got uh, that that sort of fits into the I guess a, a bit of uh, a bit of country and a bit of blues they just seem to lap it up. Yeah, who, who are they? Who are they digging? Oh, like John Butler is just you know in the in the recent years for instance has just you know they the guys over there can't get enough of him. So you know, um, you know, we've known about the guy for years, <laughs> and you're 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 a similar in a similar boat, I think, mate. You know, he is a yank, you know. Yeah, I know that, but we <laughs> we we claim we claim people like John and and anyone from New Zealand as our own, don't we? <laughs> if especially if they've done anything good. Exactly. And I, and you've got a, another new CD in the pipeline coming out very soon. Is that right? No, uh, it's already out. Um, um, Band of Gold, which is. Uh Johnny Cash mob. Um, basically, we were just recorded an album on the side, and um, just the kind of something to do to kill the kill the hours. And um, yeah, we just recorded a, 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 an album of country covers, and um, we did it fairly quickly without a lot of um, thought and, and uh, planning. And um, yep, yeah, looks like we've got an al- another album. <laughs> I look forward to hearing that one. And, um, I mentioned Charlie Owen before, and. And I guess I'm guessing that uh, the chances of grabbing Don Walker back from Chisel for a while are fairly slim. But uh, I can't wait till you get to, together with those three guys again. Well, actually, Don has actually handed me a bunch of songs on a, on a CD. It's a bunch of demos. Um, I mean, it, uh, well, I, we we do plan to make another text on a Charlie album. Um, but the planning it takes takes at least a year or two, usually. Um, so we're basically we're at the um, we're at the uh, gathering the material stage. But yeah, um, um, we we all three of us have uh, definite um, plans to do that. Magnificent. Look forward to that. And and I had the the pleasure of having uh, another partner in crime of yours, the one and only Tim Rogers, on the show recently. And uh, one one of the things we talked about that I thought was was interesting that has a parallel with you was as you both. Both you guys have uh, have been on stage with the Rolling Stones, and 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 Tim was Tim's reaction was very interesting. That that he really just he wanted to be Keith Richards. He didn't want to be supporting Keith Richards. How how did that experience feel to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it was great. Exactly. I mean, we we what we it was ninety five um, on the Voodoo Lounge tour, and um, I mean the the actual gig and the supporting the, the Rolling Stones well, it was a bit of an underwhelming experience just because uh, you know, we'll, you're, you're in this huge, well, the MCG or the SCG or something like that, and um, you're given the tiny amount of the production, you know, and uh, you were just this tiny little uh, ant farm on stage. And uh, so, there you go, and that wasn't... Uh, a great experience, but um, but to, to actually to sort of the, to rub shoulders with the stones was a was a real uh, treat, and uh, yeah, they're, they're no disappointment. They're, they're exactly as you would imagine they would be. Cool. I had the pleasure of having James Crookshank on the show a little while back, and he he said pretty much the same thing that. Uh, that the gig was fairly underwhelming. That you were you were basically playing so people could find their seats and buy an ice cream. So, but he yeah. he did he did say the same. That it was great to meet to Keith in particular. Yeah, exactly. They were, they were great fellas. Jagger was particularly uh, welcoming. Fantastic. Um, and I guess you know, I, I guess back then it was it was a, an opportunity for a lot of people that that didn't get to see the cruel sea to to get some exposure to you guys. I guess. Yeah, I saw you supporting the Rolling Stones. <laughs> that's the, the, the one time 
what they did see is, I guess, uh, yeah. And and another thing that that James spoke about with with great affection was uh, was the the Lady Boys project. And if if nothing else, he uh, he loved it for a, an opportunity to frock up and wear a white suit. <laughs> so does that mean you're going to bring them out of the closet again? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe the Adelaide Cabaret Festival next year. Oh, awesome, fantastic! Uh, what a perfect venue indeed, and and it was great fun. the The album was uh, was was such a great take on on some some tunes that we all know and love. But uh, you just you made them your own. Well, yes. Um, what will the What will the Lady Boys do next? Well, <laughs> what what direction shall we go in now? Because uh, I think we've covered the um, the seventies piano ballads uh, quite extensively. I think um, I think we might be move into more um, slick, slicker, uh, uh, funkier uh, territory. Uh, maybe like Boz Skaggs or something like that. Uh, oh yes, I can see that. I can really see that. <laughs> awesome stuff indeed. Uh, all right, Tex, it's it's fantastic. As I said, to have you bringing the uh, the dark horses back to Adelaide and. Um, the gig, the gig, as always, will uh, will be. Uh, you don't come to a Tex Perkins gig and, and go away disappointed. It's always a great time. So looking forward to seeing you, mate. Oh, you're very kind. Thanks, Michael. Good on you. Can I get you to do a quick tag for me? Sure. My show is called Sitting in a Bar in Adelaide. <laughs> if if you can do me something like this is Tex Perkins, and you're listening to Sitting in a Bar in Adelaide, or whatever pops into your mind, whenever you're ready. Thank you so much, mate. A great pleasure to say hello and uh, very much looking forward to uh, to hearing the new CD and, and seeing the gig. Take care, mate. Good on you. See you, mate. Have a good one. Bye-bye.